Hey, what's going on guys? It's Moplocks. We are going to be counting down the top 10 most nostalgic songs in RuneScape. This countdown is very opinionated. Obviously, my top 10 nostalgic songs are going to be different from your top 10 nostalgic songs because when we were 11, 10, 12, 13 years old when we first started playing this game, we weren't drones who did everything identically. Because of that, also, I ordered them in really no specific order. Actually, I take that back. I kind of ordered everything in chronological order where you start out on Tutorial Island and then you branch out and you make your way uh, to every other free player city because I believe that some of the most nostalgic songs are the songs that you first heard as a free player before you got membership, obviously. With all that being said, let's get the countdown started. I hope you guys enjoy it. Number 10, Newbie Melody. So this should probably be at number 1 instead of 10. Uh, but I just feel like out of all the songs, it should be mentioned first. Um, this was the song that everybody hears when they begin RuneScape, and if we weren't able to replay songs in our music list unless we just revisited where they originally played, we would probably never hear Newbie Melody again because it only plays on Tutorial Island. Um, when I hear this song, I don't think about all the things that I miss about the old RuneScape. Uh, I mean, how can I? When I first heard it, I knew nothing about the game. Uh, I never knew that there were cows in Lumbridge. Uh, much less even did I know what a Lumbridge was. When I hear this song, I think about the first time I played RuneScape and the anticipations that came with it. Uh, the assumptions of what I was going to be tasked with next after the tutorial instructors were done with me. I think about the excitement I had as a little kid being 10 years old and yelling for my mom whenever I fished shrimp for the first time and then yelling for her after I cooked it. Uh, but not before, you know, yelling to her about how I had burned it previously. <laughs> Uh, when I hear this song, I think about everything that I thought about when I knew nothing about RuneScape. Number 9, Harmony. So I arrived in Lumbridge, and they told me to look for the question mark on the map and go consult with the Lumbridge guide. <laughs> I immediately said hell no to that and began exploring, like I'm sure a lot of people did. <laughs> uh, I noticed when I had arrived to the mainland, I had three options, really. I could either go towards the bridge to the east, where the goblin hut was or whatever, or the woods towards Drainer to the northwest, or explore the giant castle that was close by. I had already studied the map and knew that this game was huge, so, you know, I obviously didn't want to get lost because back then there was no home teleporting option like there is today. Uh, I circled the castle first, seeing men and seeing Hans. <laughs> I love telling Hans that I was here to kill everybody in the castle even though I knew I wasn't powerful enough to do so yet, and uh, it wasn't until later I found out that I practically couldn't attack anybody in the castle except for men. <laughs> um, when I hear this song, Harmony, I think about all the things that the instructors told me to do but I didn't do, and I think about all the things in Lumbridge that I eventually figured out. Uh, I didn't even know how to walk using the mini-map for the longest time. I spent so much time clicking on the actual game world to be able to walk instead of the mini-map. I found that cows are actually pretty strong, but found that goblins were super easy. Um, I think I completed the quest Cook's Assistance without even knowing that it was a quest at the time I did it. Uh, when I hear the song Harmony, I think about how amazing Lumbridge once was to me, and how after playing the game after a little bit of time, I began to realize that it was actually a bit of a dump. Um, but I always thought of it as my dump, you know. Number 8, Unknown Land. After I had grown tired of Lumbridge, like I'm sure many people ended up doing, I ventured to Draenor, uh, due to the curiosity of what may have been behind all those woods, you know. Uh, when I got there, I was excited, sure, but... Uh, because I was somewhere else I had never been before, I carefully was making certain that I wasn't going to get lost along the way. <laughs> However, even though I was excited, at first glance when I saw the town, I was thinking to myself that it was even more of a dump than Lumbridge because of how small it was. Um, whenever I hear the song Unknown Land, I think about my skills mostly, that when I first learned how to do them, you know, Drainer was the first town that I had really discovered how to train skills in RuneScape. Uh, I saw other players, the high-leveled ones there, that were chopping those trees next to the bank. There were willows that I soon found out. Uh, most of the players, the high-leveled ones that were chopping those trees next to the bank, most of them were probably level 20 or 30. But to me at the time, I thought that they were super OP. Uh, I began chatting with others, figuring out how to light fires, chop trees, and fish for more shrimp. Uh, I also learned how to avoid combat and run away from things that might kill me because of the level 7 dark wizards next to the willows that automatically attack you and beforehand crossing the woods from Lumbee to Drain or having to dodge those guards at the prison on the outskirts of the town. When I hear unknown land, I think about Drainer 
and all of its secrets, specifically most of them being in ties to the wise old man. When I hear this song, I remember how accomplished I felt walking back to Lumbridge because I made sure I, you know, didn't get lost, and retracing my steps, knowing what wasn't lost, coming back to Lumbridge with new knowledge about how to train some of what I believed to be at the time the most essential skills in RuneScape, which was, you know, making food, fishing for food, and avoiding people who were trying to kill me. <laughs> Number seven, the song Al Carrot, a song that uh, can only make me think of one place. Whenever I hear this song, only the desert comes to mind. The yellow ground, supposedly being sand, was the first type of ground that I ever saw in RuneScape that wasn't green anymore. Uh, and it was here in Al Carrot that I bought my first ever upgraded sword from the bronze short sword that you start out with from the tutorial island. Uh, I gathered enough money from slaughtering goblins to go through the gate and had enough to also buy an iron scimitar from Zeke. Uh, I still had no armor yet, but I was beginning to figure out the ways of combat pretty well, or so I thought, you know. Uh, I needed armor, and that was my next goal. I searched all over Al Carrot, and the song that was playing made me want to actually continue searching. It was sort of like that I was focusing by listening to the song, because it has, you know, a little bit of a, a, a tune to it that you just want to, like, hum along to, you know. I found the plate leg shop and bought some iron ones uh, to go with my iron scimitar, and I was very happy. Um, when I hear this song, I think about how I learned to mine due to the mining area located there. I remember always having to dodge those stupid scorpions too because I wasn't a high enough level to defeat them. But uh, just as I spoke of earlier about Drainer, I became quite good at knowing how to avoid combat. Being an Al Carid, though, it taught me how to not only just avoid combat, but also how to get things done while avoiding combat, like mining rocks, like I would avoid the scorpions but still figure out how to mine the rocks anyway. Um, I was learning so slowly, but I was learning, and when I hear the song Al Carid, it, I think back to the days where I left my account logged out in Al Carid whenever I had to get off the computer, and whenever I returned the next day or something or the next couple days. It was as if in my own mind I was pretending that I was still stranded in the desert still from my last log on. Number 6, Still Night. Unlike my other adventures prior to this one, when this song first began playing, it plays in the part where it's the crossroads, basically, when you're starting to leave Lumbridge and heads towards Varrock. I was stuck with the decision. I had explored Lumbridge well enough to know that once you're past the chicken farm near the cows, the road would take you two different ways, which was something I put off for a long time. It was almost as if I wanted to stay in Lumbridge, Drainer, and Alcarid because they were familiar to me. And uh, I had made it a point to know them so well before deciding to venture on somewhere else. When I hear this song, Still Night, I think about that fork in the road, you know, the one where Lumbridge ends, Alcarid begins, and you can either walk to Varrock through the front gate, or head east to the eastern entrance of Varrock, where they go to Varrock, both of them, either way, but I didn't know that at the time. I, I didn't know that the two options led to the same place at the time, but I didn't want to find out, you know, exactly where one or the other went either, so I was kind of stuck. I had seen a level 19 bear to the east, where that unicorn sits over there, um, next to the bear, next to the mines south of Varrock, and I knew for certain that I didn't want to go that way because, uh, it was completely outside my combat range of what I knew I was capable of, that bear. Um, Still Night reminds me of the length of time I spent actually weighing out the options in my 10 or 11 year old brain thinking about what might happen to me if I continued down either road. Uh, but due to the level 19 bear there to the east, I knew immediately I didn't want to go that way, so I chose the northwest towards the front gates of Varrock, and it was Still Night that would soon be the first song that I ever died to in RuneScape. <laughs> Not long before reaching the front gates, curiosity got the better of me and I walked up towards the stone hinges uh, where all those dark wizards and Delrith the demon are. I was immediately killed, I stood no chance whatsoever, and so back to Lumbridge I was after I died, uh, with only my iron plate legs and iron scimitar and wooden shield back in hand. I was so mad, but I wanted revenge more than ever in my young mind. I didn't return to uh, what I had no idea was at the time, Varrock, for quite a long while after that because I didn't get very far because I died. Um, not until I slaughtered more men and creatures in the woods behind Lumbridge uh, to where I was strong enough to take vengeance one day in the future. <laughs> Number 5, Garden. The song that plays once you hit Varrock Square. God, I got so lost. I had spent weeks literally retracing my step and I hadn't gotten lost once while I was playing the game until I came to freaking Varrock. <laughs> this song became quite annoying to me actually and nowadays all I can think about whenever I hear it is how lost I was when I first started. Uh, I was scared to walk through the front gates of Varrock after being bested by those wizards in Delrith, and plus the level 21 guards scared me because I didn't know if they would attack me too, and their level was in red. 
Suddenly, Lumbridge wasn't looking so bad. <laughs> uh, but later, I found out that the guards wouldn't hurt me. I grew a pair and walked past them, uh, probably gritting my teeth the whole time, too, if I remember right. <laughs> um, after getting past them, exploring timidly was completely out of my mind. I ran as soon as I could because I could tell that the city was huge. Uh, I got so lost, and there were so many high-level players I had never seen before wearing armor that I wished I could desperately have. I began asking for free stuff like every single noob does, and that was why I started asking for free stuff, I guess, is the reasoning behind all that. Why most noobs do it, I guess. And, you know, visiting all the NPC shops around there, not even wanting to spend the coins in my inventory, but just, you know, merely just to look at what they had in their wares. Um, I was so absorbed in the population and the large size of the city that it hadn't become apparent to me yet that I was, in fact, completely lost. <laughs> Due to there never being any home teleport back when I started, when you got lost as a new player, you were simply just lost until you got yourself unlost. Um, I finally decided to head west, and perhaps that would solve all my problems, or so I thought. Just heading in one direction only, but, you know, it turns out me being lost landed me in another fairly large town uh, than what I was used to, in which I became even more lost in that one. <laughs> when I hear the song Garden, I think of Varrock immediately, and how stupid it was that I was lost, because Varrock to me now is the least confusing city in the entire game, and it's definitely not as big as it once seemed in my mind back then. Number four, Barbarianism. Ah, oh God, I really do not like this song, but, you know, I have to mention it. It's very nostalgic. Uh, just, just the first part of the... That just reminds me of Barbarian Village, you know? I mean, there's literally nothing else you can think of when you hear that song. Even if you've only discovered Barbarian Village just once as a completely new player, you still gotta associate the song with the place, even if you move on from that place. After I kept moving westward, this eventually was where I ended up was Barbarian Village. I wasn't good enough to kill the level 21 guards in Varrock or the Dark Wizards, but I was good enough to kill Barbarians since they were only level 9 and they used melee. And getting food when I ran out wasn't really that hard at all because back then there were tons of players in every world and there were always players close by fishing salmon and trout and cooking them on fires only just to drop them or give them away, so I definitely jumped on that offer. Uh, keep in mind, I started playing in 2004, and there was no Stronghold of Security back then. The entrance to where the Stronghold of Security is today we actually just used to be another coal or tin rock, you know? I spent a good enough time there, and this was actually where I figured out how to actually turn the game sounds off. <laughs> I was 11 or so, and uh, I had never hated a song so much like Barbarianism. And that hate lasted all the way up until now that I'm 20 years old. I hate Barbarianism. Uh, I don't think I'd ever want to listen to it again, but even though I dislike it so greatly, uh, it still has a sense of nostalgia for me because, you know, Barbarian Village was the place that I became a higher level uh, that I once, than I once was. Uh, but eventually I had to move on. Finding Lumbridge wasn't in my mind anymore, really. Uh, I didn't think I'd ever be able to return to it again, sadly, <laughs> because of how lost I was. At least not on purpose. I didn't think I'd get there on purpose, at least. Whenever I hear barbarianism, I think about what I thought back then was a grind, which was going from like level 2 to level 10 strength. <laughs> Number 3, Forever. I don't know if I heard this song at Edgeville first or somewhere else in RuneScape. I remember hearing it at Edgeville, but I just can't quite recall whether that was the first time I heard it or not. But either way, hearing it at Edgeville, which was where I ventured to after leaving Barbarian Village behind, was where I remember hearing it the best. Mainly because of the cave that you can enter by descending down that one ladder where those yew trees are inside that little brown building uh, near Edgeville Bank. I knew there was not a lot to do in Edgeville when I first found it, and I actually didn't go any further north because of the wilderness. I actually did stop before getting there and actually read the warning message that it displayed because of the skulls that were on it. <laughs> um, I was immediately terrified and didn't want to die again. Um, back then there was no wilderness ditch or anything stopping you from just walking right into the wilderness. Uh, back then I think the wilderness was more scary to everybody than it is now, even though there wasn't, uh, quite as many, you know, high-level monsters in there now, but it just had a certain mystique to it. Uh, but anyway, down in the caves underneath Edgeville, I couldn't go through the gate down there towards the Chaos Druids. Uh, it was a members-only feature, and the song Forever continued to play down there even, and... As a kid so young, I didn't really understand the concept of money or member worlds or any of that. I barely knew anything about free-to-play as it was. Uh, but some days later, I think I may have had my mom uh, explain to me what all it meant. And I remember the first time I got membership, 
Uh, it was way after this time that I'm telling you about now. Maybe, maybe when I was like 12 or 13 or so, you know, maybe a year or so later. I, didn't, I don't think I got membership until like the year 2006. Forever, that song reminds me of membership, actually. Everything that I thought it was, but now that I see it wasn't. I thought Membership Worlds was a completely different world than RuneScape, a world where there was no Varrock or Lumbridge. I thought becoming a member meant that you began playing an entirely different version of the game because it was always advertised that being a member gave you bonus or words like extra features. So my young brain thought of all that in the way that I already thought about the game as a whole already as a flea, free, uh, uh, flea as a free player which was something completely magical or mysterious that I couldn't wait to figure out what it was, if that makes any sense. Um, that's what the song Forever reminds me of when I hear it nowadays. Number two, Fanfare. The song that plays right when you get to Falador. Falador actually used to be black and gray instead of white, like how it is today. I don't know if you guys know that. Uh, because of this, it didn't really impress me too much, but I thought that the layout of the town was interesting. Um, how it wasn't as square as everything in Varrock was. I discovered, yet again, another mine with scorpions in it in the town, and I was immediately turned off from the town because of that. Uh, I was too much of a noob, even still, to defeat them. Uh, I believe it was this town in Falador where I began learning how to buy beer from the bars around RuneScape. Uh, I remember one day buying a bunch of them and giving them out to other players, even though I was so young, you know, I didn't know what beer was. When I hear the song Fanfare, I think about all the White Knights, actually. The White Knights really used to interest me. I really wanted to get that White Knight armor. I had never seen anybody with it before. I asked someone how to get it, though, and, and they told me that you had to be a member. And there it was, the interest again, the curiosity came back to me about being a member again, much like from seeing uh, the gate down in Edgeville Dungeon. After leaving Falador, I ventured on through the city and eventually made it back to Port Serum, only to find out that I had gone in one big giant circle pretty much because I soon discovered Drainer after Port Serum. Um, I don't think I went to Remington until way later because I didn't even know it existed because it was so secluded. Um, Anyway, from Draenor, I made it back to Lumbridge, and I never moved on to another town again until uh, I felt like I had mastered the one I was already in, like Lumbridge and Alcarid and Draenor, learning what it had to offer around them and uh, what I could use to train my skills with them. When I hear the song Fanfare, I think about free-to-play as a whole and how I knew I had to become a member because my desire to get better at the game at the time relied on becoming a member, or so I thought. I thought I couldn't get any better at it unless I became a member. I probably went on some big babbling rant to my mom about it, but eventually she finally gave in for one of my birthdays, I think it was, if I remember right, and she bought me a membership. Number one, Horizon. This is the song that plays at Taverly Gate, right on the edge of it, too. Like, if you, uh, take five steps back from the gate, a different song would play instead. But if you're within five squares of the gate, Horizon plays. And it makes me think about all the things I've done in RuneScape thus far. I had been playing the game for a little under a year or so before I finally got membership, and when I finally got it, I just stood at the gate, like, trying to think about, you know, everything that was going to happen from this point forward. I knew what being a member was now. I was a bit older and smarter than before when I had just started. <laughs> Everyone was talking about the new skill Slayer that had just come out. It was like 2005, 2006, but it was members only, and I had access to it finally, though. Um, it was at these gates, in my opinion, where the real journey began for me in RuneScape, and all my adventures from this moment here on out is what made me stick to the game, like through the years 2005 to 2009, and it's why I returned in 2011 to give it another chance before quitting in 2012 when the game became completely unrecognizable to me like it is today, uh, until the release of Old School RuneScape, of course. Um, I never thought I'd be making YouTube videos about the game. I never thought that I would be or think of the game the way I think of it now today. Uh, once I became a member and stepped through those gates and explored the world, I knew I had only seen a fraction of the game as a free player. Uh, to me, today, uh, the game has lost some of its magic to me and so many other players like me who literally grew up with it. I mean, this game taught me how to type. <laughs> And, you know, it bettered my vocabulary, as silly as that sounds. Uh, it actually helped me out a lot. Uh, I think the reason why so many people resent Jagex today for changing the game like they did 
uh, back then is not because they legitimately miss the game or want it back to the way it was, air quote, like a lot of them say. I think the reason why people still hold grudges today for what happened years ago in the game is because when we were children growing up with this game, we were impressionable naturally because we were children. And when Jagex changed a lot of the game aspects, it was hard for some people to understand why they did it at the time because we were kids. Most of the game's community was kids from the ages of like 8 or 9 to 14 around that time. A very impressionable age, as I said before. Uh, throughout the times in my life when I quit this game, uh, I still thought about it. It was always in the back of my mind, like it was seared into my brain. Uh, I often think sometimes if I could replace my knowledge of RuneScape today with something else in the real world, maybe whatever I choose to replace that knowledge with, I'd become a genius at because of how much I know about this game today as a whole. Uh, this was really one of the first games that I ever played, and I'll remember it forever because there was never an end to it once I walked through the Taverly Gate. I decide my own ending in the game, just as everybody else does. That's what I think about when I hear the song Horizon, when I really think about it. And in time, I'll probably grow up and I'll probably quit the game and never return to it like many have already done, but I'll always remember it. And perhaps one day when that day comes, when I do finally quit, I'll log out in Lumbridge, where my journey began so long ago. That's it for this countdown. Thanks for watching. Thanks to the people who suggested it. Post in the comments what the next shoot is. Blah, blah, blah. That really sucked. That was the most horrible outro. You know what? No, I'm just going to leave the outro at that. I'm just going to leave the outro as that. I'm going to leave now. Cue the color bars.